Hello. I am usually a very cautious person. I'm not... I, I have to, before I say anything, sort of double check and triple check and, and wait a little bit, make sure it's for real, right? And yesterday, I kept looking at um, the channel and it kept fluctuating between having 2,000 subscribers to 2003, then it went back to 2000 and it went to 202. And last I checked, just before um, taping this, it was at 201. So I think, I think I'm okay with saying, <laughs> We have 2,000 plus subscribers. This is so amazing. So, so, so amazing. It's, it's truly is an incredible milestone to reach. My heart is, is, is overflowing with gratitude and joy. Um, you know, this achievement is, is, is not just a number. And I say that every time we reach a certain <laughs> milestone, it, it's, but it is very true. It's a testament to the vibrant and supportive community we have built and we continue to build. And I'm not saying that, that, that this channel is built, but, but the, the extensive community that um, doing what, what we do and, and supporting the things that we support have, have built before I even got here, right? Um, so from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. I thank you for your unwavering support, your encouraging comments, your thoughtful insights, and your belief in, in this mission. You know, when I started this channel, I dreamed of creating a space where truth and creativity and a holistic approach to content could strive. Your engagement and, um, and passion have made this dream a reality. Um, our mission has always been to, to, to stand in solidarity with Harry and Meghan, to combat the misinformation and attacks that is always headed their way, um, and especially from the Brit British media, and to promote a balanced lifestyle. We have explored profound topics and, and continue to explore them like racism and discrimination. Um, we have celebrated courage and, and shared joy by, by watching like, you know, the Met Gala and, and, and do, doing things like, like fashion and so on, right? Um, and everything that I upload and that, that I do, and I really want you to know this from the bottom of my heart, it is, content that I craft with, with the utmost care and respect, aiming to inform, hopefully inspire, and, and uplift whenever I can. Your participation has been the cornerstone of our journey, right? And whether that is by, by simply um, commenting on, on an episode giving it a like or sharing the video, you have contributed to this growing movement of, of, of truth and of positivity. We have become more than just a channel, right? And I, 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 I think we are a community. We are a community. Um, some of us feel like we are, we are, we are family, you know? this family on the ethos of the internet in, in space somewhere. And it's just been wonderful. As, as we celebrate this, this milestone, um, I want to reaffirm the commitment to each and every one of you that I promise to continue to deliver content that is engaging, informative, thought-provoking, I want us to remain steadfast in our mission to educate, inspire, and, and, and build bridges of understanding and empathy. I thank each and every one of you. I thank my subscribers. 
I thank my members. You really, really, really don't know how much this means to me as we continue to take our little, our little steps and, and grow into some channel. Let us continue to grow together, to support one another, and to spread kindness and understanding in all that we do. And I say here is to the next chapter of Majesty Sussex Report, where we will keep standing in our truth with honesty, creativity, and death. Now let's get on with it. Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and as always, a absolute pleasure to have you here. And thank you for spending some of your time with us. So, as I said at the intro, 2000, it's still maintaining, so I think we're good. And um, hope you all had a wonderful weekend and a start of the week. Hope that's going well. And Father's Day for all those who celebrated Father's Day and all those who are fathers or all those who are in that role or take on that role of father, um, thank you. It means a lot to to a lot of us, you know. So I I, I, I was at, I went home, well my, my parents' home and uh, so I showed my dad the um, uh, Majesty Sussex report for your for the soul. Um, and I said it's dedicated to, to dads because it's, it's, fa it's Father's Day. So he's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So I, I, you know, had it run in and he, he just sat there and I said, okay, I said, dad, this is what I do, okay? I said, usually I have this headset on and I just close my eyes and listen to the music. And then I said, after that, the second time, I actually watch the visuals with the music. And he's like, well, should I do that? I was like, I'm just telling you what I do. You don't have to do exactly what I do. I'm just telling you what I do. So he's like, okay, okay, I'll do, I'll do what you do. So he does it, right? At the end, because he he he, <laughs> he he just listened, and then towards the end, because at the end there was there was a poem that I wrote for my dad, um, or or for fathers, and um, so he he comes he comes up <laughs> comes into the kitchen and he's like, I I I have a problem. And I said, well, what's, what's, what's the problem? Right? I was there with my other brother and my mom. And my mom, oh, he always has a problem. He always has some problem. What's the problem? Right? So I'm looking at him. I'm like, I'm thinking, okay, is there something that I, that he might have not liked in the video? Or did he get like nauseous? Because my dad has um, vertigo. So he goes, um, what do you mean by, I never said I love you kids? I'm like, what? He goes, what do you mean? What do you mean by, I never said I loved you kids? So I'm like, what is he talking about? I'm like, oh my gosh, the poem. So I was like, what do you mean? I said, dad, dad, dad. Like, you know, you weren't very comfortable saying like, I love you. Like you, you never, you never, you never were. 
He goes, I always said I loved you boys. I always said it. I always said I love you boys. I don't know why you boys are like coming up with this like stuff that I never said that. He goes, I always said it. And I'm like, Dad, oh my God. So my other brother, he goes, Dad, you, you, you never said it. It's not until like when my, my niece was, was um, born. And this is my brother who's there, his, his um, daughter. So he's like, it's not until he, he says his, um, da his daughter's name. Uh, was was born that that I don't know you got all like mushy mushy with us. <laughs> but I was like, you boys are just like rewriting history, and I don't know why you're doing this because I always told you I love you. And so my mom has the memory of a of a I don't know I don't know who has long memories. I don't know. Well, my mom. So she goes, she goes. The boys are right. She goes. If you remember well. Because in our in our tradition, like uh, we say, when we when we uh, when we leave the home or we leave to go somewhere or we departing from our parents, you ask your mom or your dad, whoever is there, as, as you're saying goodbye to, you ask them for blessings. So you say bendiciones, bendiciones mamá, bendiciones papá, and um, so he, my mom goes, they always ask you for bendiciones when they're dead, and you always said Dios te bendiga, may God bless you, right? So that's the answer, and. My mom said, you're confusing te amo with bendiciones. So you're confusing I love you with blessings. And he stops there for a second and I can see like the wheels turning in his head and he's probably going, oh shoot, they're right. Because it's, you know, he had he didn't have a problem because it's a sort of tradition um, that when, when, you, when you leave, you sort of say bendiciones, you ask your parents as a sign of respect um, for the for the blessings and 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 for wherever you you're heading next um, or whatever you're going out into the world to do um, may you be blessed in it and may may it be a good thing right so and may, may the people who you meet you know don't do you any harm or stuff like that so and so that was easy right you leave home and say blessings God bless you but when we started to say and I don't know who started it but they say, love you. And you'd be like, so awkward. <laughs> you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very interesting because, you know, m our dad is, is very, I don't want to say a, a, a product of his upbringing and generation, but I think we, we all are in, in, in many sense. And it's funny that, you know, all, all of him, it, he, his, his sons we're all very expressive <laughs> we we like to hug we like to like you know say i love you and 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 he was just not he was he was like they they're not my children <laughs> so it was it was very interesting we had we had a great time we had a great dinner and just um started to tease him even more but a bunch of stuff but anyways also i want to say thank you thank you for the views that um for the soul has actually get in it's actually increased week after week um so i really if you haven't watched it or listened please go watch it listen to it um it's a labor of love it's very relaxing you know you just you just sort of take in the music, the sounds, and if you're looking at the visuals also, take that in and just just 30 minutes for you to just, you know, relax. You can do it at any time, maybe before bed or something like that, or in the morning, whenever you have the time. Just to bring you back to center. I want to give a big shout out and big thanks to Connie, to Carla, Raven, Vivian, Beverly, Kelmut, um, Angela, Angela, <laughs> Marsha, Reba, Prudence, to all of you. And if I mispronounced any of your um, handle names, my apologies. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for the support. And um, folks, go, 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 go watch it, okay? And hopefully you will enjoy it. Um, quick comment. Um, this is to uh, Marsha. Marsha, I did not even think about that biblical story with um, Jonah and, and the whale. And uh, that imagery of the, of the start with, with, the, with, the, with the ship and, and, and the, the sort of storm was the indicative of um, 
there's going to be storms in, in your life and, and it can happen at any time, any moment, at the beginning of, of a day, at the end of a day, whenever it could happen. But there, there, there will be calm also, right? After every storm, there is calm. So find yourself in a place where you don't get devoured by the storm, but you sort of stay the course. And that's what I try to show with sort of the imagery. The storm could, all these things can be happening, but you stay the course. F center yourself. And, you know, if you're a person who, 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 who prays, if you're a person who um, talks to the universe, uh, then do so. And ask for, you know, ask for guidance, ask for um, a way out of, but stay the course, stay centered. But thank you for that suggestion. Um, and I, I, I think, Marsha, for, for anyone, it, the, the, the um, symbolism is there so that you can take from it what you need to take from it. All right. I'm so, so happy that um, this is taking off and people are starting to like it. All right. So let's get to what we really want to hear about. Sus mermeladas. ¿Por qué hay polémica por la mermelada? De Megan, dices. <laughs> que me dices que ir Megan. Digo, que ahí también está haciendo mermelada. De Megan. Bueno, Megan, tú sabes que, eh, que lanzó su marca de, de productos. All right, so Concha had a lot to say, a lot to say. I watched part of the um, Telecinco um, show, Fiesta, but the one that I found more informative or that I'm going to be speaking to or of is um, this show called um, Periodista Digital. So the, the digital um, journalist, sort of like, uh, you know, an update basically on doings of the royals and, and, and monarchy and so on. So she she talked about, um, sorry, I have my notes here. <laughs> so if you hear me um, moving paper around, it's from my notes. Um, she talked a little bit about uh, Megan and, and, and Harry most, so make Megan in a good way. So I'll, let me start with that, okay? Let's, let's start with some good stuff. So, the interviewer asked her and said, what's this whole issue again with jams? And um, Concha basically said, she goes, you know what? The whole thing with the whole jam thing is just like enough is enough. And she said, look, what uh, Megan has, has done, or what, what this new venture, they, they've been very careful and mindful as to how um, they're going to roll it out and the sort of things that she wants included in in this sort of rollout and the first sort of glimpse we got was with the canasta the the basket with with lemons and 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 um, the jam and she said actually by the way those lemons are from um the property so they have lemon trees on the property and she goes it's 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 very sort of megan is very um careful because 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 it's very art artisanal everything um very organic and and she wants things to be of good quality um and she said you know you, you can see that um time has been taken to sort of wrap it a certain way so she said what's going to be interesting once it kind of goes to the mass because megan has been numbering things right one of a hundred two of whatever so she said she was just interested in finding out like if, if she's going to still continue to sort of have the numbers there, right? So you would actually know if there were a thousand out of this batch, there was a thousand made, right? And you got the, or you bought the 100 out of a thousand, right? Something to that sort. So then she said, the, the interviewer said, well, you know, it seems obvious that they would have known that Kate was going to be um, at Chupin, uh, Chupin the Colors and that this probably was intentional. So Concha was like, why would it be intentional, <laughs> right? So she, she, she said, no, it's, it, it, it was, she goes, that, 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 even, even that, that is besides, besides like anything, because basically she said, look, Megan is very hands-on, but it's actually a marketing company that they've hired 
to do the marketing, but with the input of Megan. So Megan knows exactly what kind of thing she wants, how she wants to present it and all that kind of stuff. But the marketing company is the one who's, deci who's decided like, okay, we're gonna put this out now, we're gonna do this now, and this is gonna happen this day. She goes, when you have a campaign like that, like what they're doing, you already have your date set out. You already know what the things that you're gonna do. She goes, besides, she goes, they're in the US. They're, they're, they're doing their own thing, right? They, they don't have their minds occupied like what's happening in, in, in Britain. And she said, um, she goes, it's not, it's not intentional at all. Like it's not, she goes, she goes, it's, it's the, it's the UK press that don't leave these people alone. And the UK press is so obsessed. They want to make everything revolve or they think that everything revolves around the UK monarchy. So obviously Meghan and Harry, right, are doing, doing, doing this intentionally. And she said, to be quite honest, it doesn't matter what Meghan and Harry do they'll always be blamed for it. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Everything, no matter what they do, the UK press is gonna find a way to blame them for it and make them the villains because they have to find a villain and they found the villain, the perfect villain in Meghan and Harry. So I love that Concha was sort of, you know, she didn't, she didn't sort of pander to what the interviewer was asking her. In, in, in respect to the interview was kind of leading with a leading question like obviously they knew right and Quentin is like well no 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 they didn't but even if they did what does it matter right they, they're not there and she actually before I forget she she did say she said they did the same thing with the with the first um, rollout because all of a sudden they were saying like Megan was copying the King's jam and she goes like, like the king is the only one who knows how to make jam or, or, he, or only his jam exist. She's like, this, this is ridiculous, right? So that was awesome and cool. All right, next. The interviewer asked, well, why would they have this sort of rollout of Kate on the king's birthday? Couldn't they do it another day? And Concha said, well, nothing happens that is not intentional with British monarchy. She said, every single thing is intentional. There's a reason behind it. They have a plan for it. And she said about, I don't know many, how many weeks ago, the people in gray and the other people, because she said there are these people that make decisions. Um, she kind of worded it in a way she said, Queen Elizabeth, that the late Queen, the late Queen Elizabeth II, said that there are decisions that are made, uh, and people who make the final decisions, people I don't even know who they are, something to that regard, right? And she quotes um, the late, the late Queen. So she said that they had these these high up people, right? These senior people that are in the shadows. They had a big meeting. An emergency meeting because they realized that they would be barely anyone showing up and this I didn't know but the British monarchy they use she said yes it's the birthday thing a celebration she goes but that's the birthday thing is secondary she goes that's not the reason why they have trip in the colors she goes they have it because it's a barometer by which they're able to easily um, um, guess or, 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 or have, have a good pulse as to where the monarchy is right now. So she goes with the late queen, you know, the mount, all of that area was, was packed with people. People loved her. People came out, you know, and there was confidence in the monarchy. But the numbers were showing this time around that there was going to be barely anyone showing up. So they had a big emergency meeting to talk about that and make decisions. And then they came back and had a second emergency meeting. In that second one, the decision was made that Kate has to come out of her, you know, um, uh, not being in public, basically, right? And she said 
the the information was um, related to Kate because Kate right now is polling the highest among the royals, and uh, the people have a lot of sympathy for her. So they went to Kate, and I guess Kate obviously Kate agreed, but it had to be done according to Concha her way. Um, so the whole communique that she did prior saying that you know she's better but some days are good some days are not and announcing that that she will be at the at, at the event it was done the way she wanted it to be done even like where the camera people were located the pictures of her everything was done how she wanted it done and they agreed to it now the conscious said also the whole visit of um prince william to mi6 that was related exactly to that so they wanted to I don't know if she said they wanted or he had to go to MI6 and sort of all of the details of what was going to happen was discussed there also. She said that um, the king would have, because it's a celebration of his birthday, right? So she said he wouldn't have agreed to really have Kate there or to have her, you know, temporary come back to public eye slowly or whatever on that day. But I guess when they showed him, um, like, here's what we are seeing. This is what we think there's not a lot of people going to show up. She's polling the highest. Um, we bring her out. Uh, people are going to, more people are going to show up. Um, so he had no other um, alternative. And she was saying, like, you can see, like, on the balcony, the balcony looks kind of sad. And she goes, the people who showed up, like they weren't even what they were, they were hoping that Kate would pull in, didn't completely happen. She said, you know, um, both King Charles and Camilla are not very popular, like at all. And, you know, there was hope that maybe with his cancer diagnosis, there would be more empathy or sympathy. She goes, there's a little bit of that, but, but it's not the same as how some people are feeling about Kate. Right, so she is drawing in like the bigger amount of, I guess, people feeling sorry for her. Um, she said one of the factors could be that you know Kate is younger and the king is older, so and she has three young kids, so people are feeling you know so sorry for her. She also added and said, look, like this whole thing that they that they did was just so stupid, and they should have just come out clearly with what was happening. Like all the the, the, the the photo shop thing and, and this whole thing in the market and so on. She goes, all of that was just them trying to resolve a problem or, or doing what they shouldn't have been doing when they could have just said, here's the situation, here's what's happening. Um, and she goes, the public would have gotten that better than this all this false and fake stuff that they were they were pretending to do. She said, um, and this was kind of an odd, kind of weird thing. She said she, they want these journalists, these so-called, you know, the royal road or whatever. They want them to speculate. They want them to to think certain things are happening, because they don't want to take the blame when the truth comes out or when, like, let them speculate about these these things. Let let's let's not correct it. So. If anything happens or something happens, and then they will not be blamed for it. If the, the the journalist or these people who give that information, they would be the ones blamed. So she talked also about you know when Kate appeared, she goes everything has been carefully choreographed, that even to the minute detail. Uh, she said she's wearing a wig. That is not that's not her real hair. Or it's a combination of. Um, she goes, there is, she's wearing tons of makeup. She goes, like, a lot of makeup. And she said the makeup is to hide certain things. I don't know what it is to hide, but she said the makeup is there to hide certain things. Um, so she didn't say anything about a facelift or anything like that, but she just said it's to hide certain things. Um, she goes, the whole white outfit with, um, you know, it's just to sort of go with this whole thing, you know, innocence and purity and, and the whole um, Doolittle um, from the movie, 
with Audrey Hepburn. It's it's sort of to inspire that, and for some of that to be granted to Kate, like you know, she's she's just this common girl from a common place, in this big royal family, and you know, she's just trying her best. That kind of thing, right? Playing again on, let's all feel sorry for Kate. And she was saying her stylist has a lot to do with that too. This same size, um, stylist, I think it's Natasha, um, who has been um, now given a promotion uh, not too long ago. And um, she now is, is basically Kate's right-hand person. And she's making sure that, you know, the sort of narrative changes. She talked a little about the smiling too. She goes, you can see that it was not completely like a natural smile. She goes, she's under, she, you know, the medication and the treatment she's going, she's taken. She did say chemotherapy, but she said, you know, she said it in a way, she said, well, if Kate is saying she's taking chemo chemotherapy, we'd have to believe her, right? She goes, but there's other procedures also that she is getting, or she, she has to do for whatever it is that she has, if it's cancer, but she goes, there's other things also. And she goes, the loss of weight um, is due to all of those things combined. She talked about the balcony and um, the interactions. She said that Kate and King Charles, they have a good relationship. Um, she said, but there is nothing, nothing between William and Kate, like nothing. She said it's curious that the UK press took a snap, like a one second snap of Kate smiling at, at him. And they've just run with that to say, look how romantic they are. They're so in love. Like this is the, they look at each other in the eyes and she goes, that is so far from the truth that he can't even stand being in the same room with her. And that throughout this entire thing, he barely talked to her. He barely look, looked at her. And he, he, she said it's interesting that they they chose to have Kate at immediate right-hand side of the king. That shouldn't be her. It should be actually William there, not her. Um, but it seems that that's something she requested. And to be in the right hand of the king. And also that she's not supposedly you know that she is not um having great hopes anymore with between her and william so she's concentrating on george and making sure that i guess he gets whatever and and because she is the mother of the you know the future future king she said in regards to the kids, she goes, um, she goes, Charlotte is very observant and that she like clocks everything. And she said, you know, the people, whatever is affecting the most is, is um, George and Charlotte because they are oldest and they have, a, they have an understanding of whatever is happening. Um, she also said that, um, Sophie and Kate have kind of gotten closer um, because she said Sophie between like, you know, that circle is the only one who kind of like either checks up on her or um, when she was there for um, the event, Sophie was the only one next to her, you know, making sure she needed anything or stuff like that. Sophie was trying to take care of her basically yes yeah, so i think that's basically about that part she said this was all just really badly handled and now they're they're sort of um yeah the the the, the, the stylist is um natasha archer i think that they're trying to I, I don't know sort of bring things back into into their control that things of they the way they they thought they were going to so, solve this was all those like the public was going to buy the stuff that they sent out basically right and she goes this could have been done in a straightforward way 
without all of this nonsense and they would have gotten better favor or press out of it than, than what they have right now. She says she does feel sorry for um um for King for King for King Charles. That of course like he was the lip readers when he went into his carriage, um he said, I don't know, why why am I crying or something like that or why am I so emotional? And she said it has to do like the the treatment he's under too that medication all this kind of stuff is making him you know i guess more sensitive about certain things and 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 whatnot but she said it's kind of sad that you know he is going through all of this and all the attention is being given to kate like it's his birthday stuff yes she was there but even the press no one they just ignored everything about him and she gets all the attention so Concha is basically saying, you know, she she's just feels sorry for him because, you know, he's not very popular. Camilla's not popular and he's he's feel he's he's absolutely feeling it. She also referred to D Day and she said um that was a plan that King Charles had and he is trying to push William into being taking on more responsibility and taking on that role where people start to see him more often and in more um, important roles so they get used to seeing him in those environments um, but basically the king is trying to push him to do it and like you know tell him he has to do this or that and it was completely planned for the king not to be there on that that particular day so that they can be photographs and, 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 and what's not showing that William is, is taking on, you know, bigger role and being stately and all that kind of stuff. So uh, King Charles realizes that the monarchy right now is in a very bad place and that a lot of the stuff that they're doing is still is very antiquated um he doesn't see i guess where he can help or fix it or whatever so he thinks i guess people will like william more and so let them kind of push william in front so that people can start to think more of a quote-unquote modern monarchy and now in regards to the Father's Day um Father's Day uh, photo, she she said that she didn't want to say much about it. She goes but she said in in an interesting way. She goes, Look, I'm not gonna say that that picture was taken a while ago. I'm not gonna say that that picture is highly like like touched up and digitalized and stuff like that. And she goes, I'm not going to say any of those things. All I'm going to say is that that picture was taken the way it was taken for a purpose. And it's to show that William is this, you know, casual, down-to-earth kind of guy. He loves his kids. You can see, you know, they're all embracing each other. And um, she said, yeah, that, that photo was not taken this month or anything like that she goes that was taken a while ago and um and she said you know what i'm going to leave it like that she goes because i'm not going to be commenting anymore about photos and, and and ai or whatever she said all i'm going to say is here's the intention the intention of that was to show that he's a good father he's he loves his kids and that he's down to earth and then she said because they want to show the contrast between his father, so King Charles, that picture with King Charles and William shows a very detached man, a man who's not, who's cold, who's not warm. That, um, you know, that William has a very different relationship with his children than what he received from his father. And she goes, you know, they they that that's what they want to they want to portray and that's what they want the public to 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 see now she said you know you have to think of it also that 
Charles is a product of what he received. She goes, he didn't receive any like hugs or whatever from his father, from, from Prince Philip, that it was very cold relationship. She goes, he almost, she said, you know, you could say he had a military education because where he went was not a very nice place. Um, and she said, you know, William was different. They, she, he had Diana for, 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 for many years who was warm and, and, and hugged her kids and so on. Um, but she said, that's the contrast they want out there and that's what William wants to be shown and that's what being shown. And she talked briefly about the wedding of the century, quote unquote, supposedly, the um, Duke of West, Westminster. And um, she said, yeah, the, the, the Duke is friends with both William and, and Prince Harry, but he's closer to Prince Harry. And she said, Prince Harry is the one who actually called him and said, listen, like, I, I don't want, I don't want this to become a circus, that kind of thing. So, you know, we love you. We love her. You guys have a great day. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just stay back. Let him have it. So she said, William sort of insisted that he had to be there. And she said it was kind of odd because he didn't seem like he was in the mood to be there or like he didn't really, he just wanted to be there because he wanted to be there. And, and they, they, the um, interviewer asked her and said, well, how about, you know, Rose? I want to call her, you know, Rosebud um, or something. If if um, Rosebud was going to be there. And she said, well, Rosebud did receive an invitation because th these are all society people, right? Aristocrat people. And she said, um, her not attending would kind of be weird, but at the same time, it would give credence to what some people are saying and Concha said you know my sources right now are saying she wasn't there they didn't didn't come and she said um, I can't say she was there or she wasn't I have to really make sure make sure that you know we are correct in what we're saying and she said I don't think that she went but I can't say either way A recent article referred to cancer patients and perhaps to the rest of the population as lesser mortals compared to Catherine, Princess of Wales, exemplifies a deeply ingrained yet outdated notion, the inherent superiority of British royalty. This concept, often veiled in terms like blue blood and divine right, has historical roots, but in a modern diverse society, it reeks of elitist attitudes and undermines the very essence of human resilience. This glorification of stoicism ignores the, the realities of working class individuals who often lack the privilege of paid sick leave and must power through illness to keep a roof over their heads. For centuries, the British monarchy's power rested on the idea of a divinely chosen bloodline. Kings and queens were seen as closer to God their bodies literally imbued with a special essence. This myth, perpetuated through elaborate ceremonies and pronouncements, fostered a social hierarchy with the royals at the pinnacle. However, this supposed superiority crumbles under historical scrutiny. Monarchs like any human are susceptible to illness, folly, and moral failings. The lesser mortals, quote-unquote, comment is particularly insensitive. Cancer is a disease that doesn't discriminate based on social status or network. 
It's a battle fought with courage and grace by millions. And to suggest that beauty or elegance is diminished by illness is not only shallow, but deeply hurtful. Today, the concept of a superior bloodline is not only outdated, but offensive. Britain is a multicultural nation, and the idea that a select few are innately better than the rest goes against the very principle of equality and opportunity. The true measure of a person lies not in their birthright, but in their strength, in their compassion and contributions to society. The blatant hypocrisy becomes even more glaring when compared to the treatment of Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex. These royal reporters and commentators and what's not who loud Catherine often resort to thinly veiled or even not so thinly veiled racism when discussing Megan. This disparity reveals a deeper issue, a system that elevates certain members or certain race of the royal family while marginalizing others based on ethnicity This unquestioning adoration for the royals can be attributed to several factors. Just I'm going to mention just a few. Some reporters may cultivate a closer relationship with the palace, leading to a fear of losing access if, if, if they criticize them. Others might be drawn to the glamour and, and prestige associated with covering the royals, creating a bias towards portraying them positively. And some of them are just sycophrenic people. The adoration goes beyond. Now, Additionally, a, a, a segment of the public craves a sense of tradition and stability, which the monarchy, one may argue or discuss or not, you know, provides for some people. However, such, such blind loyalty ignores the human cost. It, 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 it fosters a culture of indifference towards the struggles of those outside of the royal circle. This glorification to be stoic ignores the realities that others cannot afford to be stoic. They don't have that privilege. They need to work to keep a roof over their heads. And perhaps what that article indicates to all of us is the coverage that we've seen from many, many, which completely dedicates hours of their programming about the royals, about Hayden, Meghan Markle, but ignores the suffering of an entire population that has gone over again and again on austerity, the NHS crumbling, not enough money going into it, homelessness at its highest. As a matter of fact, it's the one thing that the UK seems to be excelling at. But do you hear any of that on your news? Do you hear any of that on some of these TV networks that just seem to be obsessed about whether or not Megan's jam? Jam? You mean to tell me jam is going to bring down the monarchy? How about you are bringing down the monarchy? 
take a deep, deep, deep look at yourself. When you have the gall to compare cancer patients, how dare you? How dare you and call them lesser mortals? Look at yourself in the mirror, my friend, my dear. And you will see that which you have called others. But only worse. For your insides are rotten. Rotten.